Well, he was always a fierce defender on the field, and now Todai Kefu has shown he's just as tough off it. The former Wallaby was forced to protect his family during a violent home invasion in Brisbane last month. As Jessica Millwood reports, it was an attack that rocked the community to its core. Horror in suburbia. We're going to start this hour with some breaking news and former Wallabies player Todai Kefu is fighting for his life. This is terribly sad news, this, after allegedly being stabbed in his Brisbane home. Teenagers brazenly breaking into the Kefu's Kuparu home while the family slept. It was Totai's wife, Rachel, who first confronted the offenders. Her husband and son then stepped in. The struggle that followed would result in devastating injuries. He was stabbed in the abdomen. His wife and two adult children were also injured in this terrifying home invasion. As the Wallabies legend fought for his life on the floor of his own home, the four alleged offenders aged between just 13 and 15 fled. That's when the Kefu's neighbour, Ben Cannon, heroically stepped in, pinning down one of the teens until police arrived. A random attack that will have a lasting impact long after the physical injuries have healed. Unbelievable, wasn't it? And mm. we're pleased to say that Todd Kefu joins us now in Kuparu in Brisbane alongside his neighbour, Ben Cannon. Nice to see you both this morning. Todd, we're so happy that, that you and your family are OK. How's everyone doing? Yeah, Ali, uh, everyone's doing really well. Um, you know, just the normal stuff happening. Um, but we're, we're, we're going really well. Really proud of the family. They're, they're coming along really well. Just incredible. I mean, we were all so shocked um, that morning reporting uh, on what had transpired inside your house. Toto, would you mind talking us through uh, what happened um, so that we, we have an idea on what happened behind those closed doors? Yeah, so um, my wife uh, heard some noise downstairs, so she got up. Um, um, she doesn't sleep that well, so she got up, uh, turned the lights on, went downstairs and, and, and was confronted by the intruders. Um, she screamed. Um, I, I got straight out of bed um, and then ran downstairs. Um, and, and then confronted them. You know, it was pretty... I was initially very shocked to see how young they were. Um, mm. They would have been, to my eyes, you know, 15, 16 years old, but um, they were wielding a, a, a knife and a, a machete. And what happened then? Well, we, we, we asked them to leave and um, uh, we, we were actually backtracking towards the kitchen and we walked past the, fr uh, the front door and I said, you know, there's the door, leave now, cut your losses. Um, but they were, they were quite agitated um, and, and the older one kept lunging at us um, and uh, he, he first uh, lunged at Rach and, and got her on the arm um, and then I grabbed a stool and basically just charged them both. And so where were the kids during all of this, your kids? Um, so at, at that time uh, when I was telling him to, to leave the house. My kids woke up um, and uh, when, I, when I lunged with them at the, with the stool, my eldest son ran downstairs and so he lunged at one and then I lunged at one. Uh, the two youngest kids, they stayed upstairs and the two girls, mm. while, we, while my, me and my son were wrestling, the two girls snuck outside the, uh, the front door. So you're, you lunge at these guys, uh, you and your son, what happens? So well, my son, my son was wrestling with one. Um, I was wrestling with another. He kind of he kind of got away from me. There was blood everywhere at this stage. Um, he got away from me and ran out the front door. I um, I slipped and chased him. Um, but then when I got up, he slipped as well around the front door. And that's when um, that's when my neighbour uh, was running up the front steps and 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 kind of crash tackled him, uh, pinned him down, and then I turned around and ran back inside to help my son. I mean, Ben, when, when you came over and obviously you heard the noise, what, what were you confronted with? What did you see? Um, Ali, the, the house was, was all dark, but a few lights on, and it was probably the noises that were most... Um, like, you know, talk about a blood-curdling scream. I'd never heard one, and I, I now know what it, uh, what it means. It's, um, it's, a, it's a particular 
um, sound in the still of the night. And so I, <clears throat> I sort of ran towards it and the house was dark, but then the door flew open. And then I was confronted with a pretty horrific scene of what had been taking place um, and what was tied to all the kind of the screams and commotion at the Kefu house. Can you describe that scene a little bit for us? And um, I mean, we'll get oh. we'll get we'll get to how how impressive it is that you did that in a second. But just give us an idea of what you saw and then what happened afterwards. Um, well, what um, what what we were all I guess confronted with was the you know in in, in a short period of time the the, the volume of, of um, harm and violence that was committed against the Kefus resulted in. You know, as Todd, I said, lots and lots of blood, um, and uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that we shouldn't. Um, you know, you're not you're not supposed to kind of have happen in your home, but it yeah. unfortunately did. I mean, Todd, I this is this is your family home. This is your safe place, and this is your family that was under attack. I mean, just thinking back, and even the fact that you're standing here now and talking about it, how does it make you feel? Oh, well, we're, we're, we're very grateful that uh, we're still here. Um, things like this shouldn't be happening, um, and that's the reason for, for coming on today and mm. talking about it. Um, it's, it's from what I've seen in the past, and, and even now, it's been happening quite uh, often, you know, uh, home invasions, car thefts. Um, and it's something, you know, a, a home is should be your, your castle. That's where, you, mm. that's where you live. It should be a place of safety. So really, really surprised to confront those kids, actually, that night. Do you know, um, we, we were worried about... We were very worried about you. Um, mm. there, there were reports coming through of your injuries um, and how serious mm. they were. Did you wonder if you were going to get through? Or what, was, what was your mental state like with these young fellas around? Yeah, I, was a, I, I wasn't too bad. Um, I, I was more worried about probably the other family members. Uh, my son got cut pretty badly on his back. Um, but, um, yeah, everything's... It, it worked out all well. Uh, my, mm. my wife was probably the worst out of all of us. Mm. She's still got her arm um, in a cast and we're still not sure whether she can get full use out of her hand. Um, but fingers crossed, we hope she gets a cast off in a couple of weeks. So we're just hoping... Mm with the therapist and with all the treatment over the next six months that she can get close to full use of her hand. Is she all right? She's OK, yep. She's yeah. back to normal. She's screaming at me and yelling at the kids. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a good sign. And you never, you never thought you'd welcome that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Todd, what do you make of Ben? Um, Swinging over from next door, mm. I mean, neighbours in Queensland are pretty close, but but that's a whole new level, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of people have asked that question. We, we've actually known each other um, for a while. Our families have intertwined with the same rugby club for years. So, um, mate, he's a, in my eyes, he's a hero. To see him come up the front stairs, um, his timing was absolutely perfect. And uh, mm. if he wasn't there, um, who would would have thought what might have happened. Wow. And how do you both feel about these offenders? I mean, one of them was, was as you said, alleged to be 13 years old. Can you believe that someone so young was capable of such violence? Uh, I think, um, you know, we're, we're a sort of... We're a product of, of a failed system that allows these young offenders and, I mean, and, and older offenders. Mm. But, you know, you, get, you, you do an apprenticeship... In, in any trade, and, and, and by, by choice or right, they've chosen crime as their trade. You do yeah. it enough times, and you get allowed to do it again and again and again. You get good at it. Um, and then Todd and I both, um, you know, spent too long with these guys in in his home, um, and the confidence that they had. Mm. You know, it wasn't like like um, like what like we were calling the shots. It was like they were. And that only comes because these guys have done it many many times. Out on bail. You know, another story. You know, the really sad thing is two, three years ago, the government said they were going to make, you know, be hard on crime. Um, and since then, people continue to die. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, we came so, so close. We wonder when the blood on, on the government's hands will stop because it's, it's really... Um, for us, it's a life-changing event that, that, you know, we are all working in our own way to try and get through. Mm. Um, but it's, it's, it shouldn't happen.
We said it at the time, um, we, we went pretty hard on the, the bail laws and the fact that um, mm. these people, some of them had been in front of the courts before um, and been let off and re-offended. Um, the, and those crimes, they get more and more serious, don't they? You make 100% the right point there. Um, Toto, the family, how do you move through this and navigate through this and, and the kids OK? Yeah, the kids are fine. Um, you know, my eldest son, I think he's... Um, He's, he's adapted well. Uh, he's got a girlfriend out of it, actually, so <laughs> my wife's happy. Um, the, I mean, um, there's norm, normal things have happened, which is, you know, there's a few nightmares, um, mm. lack of sleep. You know, my wife still doesn't sleep too well, oh. which, is, which is all normal. And the psychologist said that with time, things should heal. Um, mm. Yeah, so we, we just want to go back to normal. Um, and I think the more that happens, the better we'll get. Well, look, you're clearly a strong and very ca um, close family. We send you all our love yeah. and, uh, and well done to your son too. I like, I like you've still got a sense of humour <laughs> and that your son's managed to get a girlfriend out of it. And your wife's still yelling at you. <laughs> your wife's still yelling <laughs> at you. <laughs> Everything's kind of normal. <laughs> Good stuff, guys. Thank you so much and for, um, and for putting that message so clearly. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Amazing story, isn't it? Quite Amazing extraordinary, story. isn't it?